Hey everybody, how's it going? It is 2016, September 16th. We're out here. We're checking out a few trail cameras before we jump in the woods tomorrow. It is the opener of the PA season. Fortunately this year, we have still have been eluded by uh, some decent mature bucks. We've been seeing a lot of two and a half year old bucks, but we're just not seeing the uh, the big the big boys even on trail cam throughout this entire summer. So it kind of leaves us guessing really uh, what's going to happen this year. But our plan is last year we had an amazing year. I ended up killing a 13 pointer first Monday of the season. Seven other bucks underneath me, 20 yards. I couldn't ask for anything better than that. Great footage. And it was just a great hunt, and I was so spoiled by that. But coming into this 2016 year, I'm still not, uh, I don't have a delusion on what I'm after again. This year, we're going to be looking for something, uh, hopefully 120, 125 inches minimum would be probably the best that we're going to be trying to look for in this, in this part of Pennsylvania. Uh, this part of Pennsylvania is a little harder to hunt. In uh, retrospects, of, we do have a antler restriction that allows two and a half year old bucks to really grow up so we have a lot of two and a half year old eight pointers that are that are roaming through that seems to be the majority of the bucks harvested uh, in the Pennsylvania season is those two and a half year olds or sevens eights nines uh, we're gonna try to get something hopefully a little bit older but at the same time if 125 class eight pointer comes in early season we're gonna take it just because then we can jump behind the camera and film other people uh, hunting as well. I got a bunch of my friends uh, that I want to get behind the camera and film them. I'm excited for the rut. Last year the rut was really hard. Uh, last year we had five, six days of 70 plus degree weather and it was absolutely miserable. Uh, we'd go in there, we'd sweat walking in, we'd sweat coming out and the deer movement was nothing at all uh, during that time November 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th it was just hot and so the rut movement we really didn't have it uh, coming into this 2016 year we've been practicing our brains out shooting almost every other night at least uh, 20, 30, 40 yards uh, getting comfortable with the brand new BTX bow that I'll be shooting this year and just getting my equipment up to par but uh, it's going to be a, quite a year we're very, really excited about it Hopefully you guys have been following us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, following our daily logs that we're posting up there on what we're seeing, what we're not seeing. But uh, it's going to be a good year. So we got real high hopes. But uh, you know what? We'd like to thank everybody for watching our online videos and everything. And if you got any questions, comments, or anything like that, you look us up on Facebook and uh, post your comments. We're uh, welcome to answer any questions that somebody might have into it. Like I said, Bowwards here, we do a lot of solo cam hunting. Unfortunately, I don't have a very large crew uh, out there filming and everything like that. So I primarily do most of it, but uh, I've been getting a little bit better as the years go by. So hopefully you enjoy the footage of the 2016 year and uh, it's preseason. So we're going to get out there tomorrow starting and uh, see what it goes. But yeah, we'd like to thank you very much and uh, shoot straight out there and good luck this 2016 season. First morning, Pennsylvania archery season. We're sitting down here on a 20, 30 yards off this green field. It's hay, soybean, and corn. Last year, <clears throat> came in here in the afternoon, saw some really good deer movement, decided to go in here today with the wind coming across this way, so we're expecting these deer to come out of this corn, come down through into the bedding area in the back here, and that's what they did this morning, but it was a little bit too dark, and the tree that I picked, I'm facing this way, and I should have really been facing that way because a big doe came in Two yearlings came in with her too. Um, they had no spots on, so she was good to go. Uh, but as I said, when she came in the first time, it was way too dark. Uh, the camera light was real low and everything, so I chose to pass on her. But uh, 
then she snuck back behind me again. If, if, if I was in a tree facing the field or even facing that way, I could have definitely got it in time. But she ended up sneaking around, coming down. Her fawns came down, or her yearlings came down the trail. And she ended up staying in this like little thick patch here. And then no lie popped out, and I had zero shots whatsoever. But so I'm going to be changing this setup uh, for this evening. But I think we're going to stay here in the evening. We've got two decent bucks that are definitely shooters uh, that are roaming through here. Now most of it's nocturnal activity. So, but uh, I want to go see if there's any acorns. Last year, first day. Ended up having a real nice eight pointer come down through here. And then a four pointer came in and there was a there was a nice oak tree here that was putting down some acorn. When I walk out, I'm gonna look at those and see if there is any acorns. But I'll make a quick change up, but it's just started first day. So we'll see how it goes. Here it is, September 17th. It is the afternoon opener. We're headed out to the stand um, in the corner of a uh, hay field, and half of it is a tree corn. stand. I went out and bought a climber this morning just so I can get up here. My other climber is in another stand. I wanted to get in here though. Last time we're seeing a pretty heavy bug in this field here. But the thing is, we were, I don't know, 80 or 90 yards that way. So we really couldn't see too much. So it's raining. It's exactly what you want. There's a light wind coming off and the thermals are rising up though. Just gonna take our set up. But we're on a lush green field and uh, it just got done raining. I don't think it's gonna rain for the rest of the night. So. We're excited. This is a good spot. First time sitting in this spot, so hopefully these deer are pressured. We're just gonna sit, relax, and see what we say. Stay tuned. All right, well here it is. It is the day before the opener of statewide Pennsylvania archery season. I'm going up to the camp up here where I shot my big buck last year. Uh, this year it's gonna be a little different. Last year we had corn. This year we have soybeans and the soybeans are already drying out. It's been a dry summer here. So we're gonna really go there, check our trail cameras, see if the uh, deer presence is as good as we had it a few weeks ago when the soybean was green. But we're going to have to take a look at that, but uh, hopefully get up here, just uh, have some good fun hanging out with the guys, and we are going to go see if we can kill us some deer. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll see you in a little bit at the hunting camp. Alright, well here we are. We are at 
the hunting camp. Again, we moved it this year, uh, put it down in this little hollow right now. We've got some wind coming across. It's blowing about 15, 25, somewhere around there. So uh, hopefully it chills out a little bit for tomorrow. But uh, we're gonna get settled in here and uh, <clears throat> maybe do some practicing. We got the bag set up. So we're gonna get uh, shooting here, but we checked the trail cameras and uh, it does not look good. Um, the deer sightings have dropped off. The soybean is dry, just as we thought. And uh, there's some does coming out in the backfield, but we don't really wanna shoot does back there. Um, they're one of the main draw factors in the pre-rut uh, in about two, three weeks. Uh, the bucks will be back there again just because of the amount of does. But on the long term, we're still going to get out in a tree stand, maybe sit on a little bit of a small green field, see if any of the deer are moving up there too. But uh, it's going to be a little bit harder of a hunt this time. But hey, we'll go and see what we can do. You can't kill them while you're sitting on the couch. Well, day late and a dollar short. Deer haven't been hitting the soybeans. The soybeans are drying up pretty good. They're just not hitting them during shooting hours. So we backed up off the field. We're probably 150 yards off the soybean field down this hollow. <clears throat> we came in here pretty early and it won't rain tonight starting at like 7 o'clock, which is fine because it's usually dark by, by that time. But as I'm climbing up, getting everything ready, my first encounter with a mature doe at shooting range ends up watching me climb the tree, then came in here, snorted at me, tried to figure out where I was, couldn't figure out where I was, and ended up coming by me and uh, had a button buck with her too. But, so, the deer are on their feet, but, uh, she came in and gave me a 10 yard shot. So, well, hopefully maybe passing on that uh, buck will come and do the same thing without the snorting and such. But we'll see. Stay tuned. Since the spike buck walked down where my main camera couldn't reach, I ended up grabbing my cell phone and videoing the spike buck. All of a sudden, an eight pointer popped up and started sparring a little bit with this spiky.
torrential downpours. Awesome. Just what I needed. Trying to locate my buck. But see if we can get on some blood here. Jeez. That's what happens. I knew they wanted a storm coming in. I didn't think it was going to be this bad. But that's the way that it goes. Well, here it is. It is the next morning after the first day of the Pennsylvania opener archery season. Uh, last night, I kind of had a mission. Uh, we were at our uh, our camp up north, and uh, last year shot a really nice 13 point, but it really didn't deter what exactly was a good Pennsylvania buck for that area and the areas that I hunt. Um, I really wanted to get a buck this year early season. I got a lot of filming to do. I want to jump behind a bunch of my friends and everything. And this buck came in and he ended up uh, spooking away a little spike buck. He went down and sparred with a spike buck that was actually trailing a doe. The doe came, came up with the spike buck in behind her. And then all of a sudden I heard a little snort wheeze. And this one came right up the hill. And you can't ask for anything better. 15 yard shot. Uh, he did everything that you could possibly do for filming your own hunt, but he's not the biggest deer in the woods, but he's a good deer, and I'm happy to uh, take him home, put some meat in the freezer, but this ends my Pennsylvania uh, buck season. All right, here it is, October 4th. We're gonna be getting up in this tree stand right here. Right now, we're on a green field. This is a alfalfa field. And uh, we're just gonna get up, see what we see tonight. But this green field tracks the deer. So hopefully get up, see what we see. It's October 4th here, Pennsylvania. We're overlooking an alfalfa field where after a doe shot my buck last, uh, last Saturday. <clears throat> the wind direction is coming across down here. Whenever the wind direction comes this way, the does end up popping out this side of the field. If it's going towards their bedding area, they pop out in the middle of this field. So we got a hunting blind there. Tomorrow I'm going to take my daughter there. And, uh, but tonight's going to be like an observation slash. If anything comes by 20 yards, we can, t we can take it. But looks like it's going to be a good night. It's cool, cloudy. This is what you want to see when you're in the woods. So we're going to quiet down here and uh, see what pops out in this field.
There's two little toes across the field. Yes, that is what I'm talking about. October 4th. I came in here yesterday. We put a blind in for me and my daughter for tomorrow. Expecting these deer to come out from this bedding area. Out into the corn. There was two does over here. And all of a sudden I turned around. And there's a, a big doe with uh, yearlings old enough deer that they're good so she came in and she had me pinned I was sitting here for like five minutes not knowing what to do just because I was sitting down but I was contemplating a getting the video and stuff and then also try not to spook her because this stand is wide kind of in the open a little bit but ended up hitting her a little bit high dropped her put another arrow in her as fast as I could. I want a clean, ethical kill, and that's what I gave. So I'm happy about it. She didn't go anywhere, three yards. So awesome, good afternoon to me. Yes. All right, well, here it is. Here's a quick tip for the new guys getting into bow hunting. If you hit high, and it drops them. Always respect that deer. Put another arrow in as fast as possible. I always do it. I don't worry about the video or moving cameras around first. I get on that, put a second shot on it, finish that deer off right, show some respect to that deer. Here she is, just an amazing doe. <clears throat> big, big, long nose on that doe. Mature doe, that's what we we're after tonight, and uh, we got it done. I hit a little high on the first shot. Second shot, took the lungs out, made a quick kill, and uh, can't be any happier. It's gonna be great. I was looking for some back straps and I was looking to shoot mature does this year and that's uh, what we've been doing. So, got my buck two days ago, a doe. You can't get any better. It's awesome. Absolutely awesome a year. So, starting off good and uh, 
So we'll just keep trudging on and I hope you enjoy this because uh, we're enjoying getting out, being in nature and just uh, harvesting some animals to uh, put meat on our table. But all right, I'm gonna get out of here because I wanna take my daughter here tomorrow to see some deer. So I'm gonna get this wrapped up and uh, get going. All right, well here it is. It is October, second week, and we are dropping off at Nature's Accent Taxidermy. This is my friend, Bunnell, and he's gonna be doing my eight-point buck here that we shot last week, so hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, it looks as amazing as most of his other mounts are, but... I don't want to worry about that. Yeah. So but, <clears throat> Bunnell is a taxidermist that I met last year and uh, wanted to do some work. He does amazing work with uh, habitats and everything like that too that just accent your mounts but um, quickly when we're talking about taxidermy for me anyhow as a hunter the first things that I always look after when getting back my mount or, or looking at a taxidermist to get a mount done is usually eyes, nose, and that's like my main thing. And the ears. And the ears. They're, they're what about the ears important. do you look for? Uh, the, the definition on the ear butts is a, is a good thing to look for. Inside the ears, there's some definition to put in there. It's, it's oftentimes not incorporated properly, and most people don't see it anyway, so it's not a real huge important thing to most people, but I usually, I do try to incorporate that into the mouths. Uh, definitely the eyes is the most important. Thing. Yeah, the eyes. Well, that's usually what I always did when I looked at, I mean, I've been, I've been getting mounts since my first buck that I shot eight years ago, and I've noticed the different techniques in taxidermy back then compared to now. Oh, it was like Bondo change. ears, and now you got ear liners and everything, but it's just, the, it's amazing what the new taxidermy and their, uh, the ability to just 
make it absolutely like it's going to jump right out of your wall. Right, right. There's a lot of new forms on the market too that are that are uh, making taxidermy better. Yeah. And I mean, it's still up to each individual taxidermist to yeah. to make them out as good as possible. But the, the new forms available do make it easier. Well, as I said, I'm going to leave it in the, your good hands. Yeah, it's in good, it's in uh, good hands right now. All right. Thanks a lot. Well, we're going to be back in a few weeks to pick this up and uh, we'll see how it turns out.